So the next thing, Brianna, that we went over, uh, the next one was uh, substitution. Now, um, please note, guys, when you guys have your exam, I'm going to ask you to solve a system of equations. If you want to solve system of equations by graphing, substitution, elimination, whatever, whatever works for you um, is fine. However, for the, the quiz, I'm going to ask you to do substitution, and I need to see substitution. So if you don't do it substitution, that's going to be kind of wrong, because I want to see exactly you working on this prog uh, process. So with doing substitution, it's very important for us to understand why what we're doing with substitution. Basically, with substitution, what we want to look for is we want to look for a variable that has a coefficient of 1, which that doesn't work. Which you guys can see here, this, co this uh, variable n has a coefficient of positive 1. All right? So when you have that variable has a coefficient of uh, 1, that is going to be the variable that you're going to want to solve for. Sheldon, if you need a desk all by yourself, that's perfectly fine. We can get that arranged. Okay, so I have negative 2m plus n equals 6. Since this is the only variable, and it doesn't really matter, even if it's not the only variable, you can do, if there's more than one variable that has a coefficient of 1, then just pick one. But you're going to want to solve for your variable um, n. And the reason why we like finding the variables that has a coefficient of 1, of one is because it's very easy to solve for that variable. All I had to do to solve for this variable is add a 2m on both sides. You guys see that? It's very simple. If it had a coefficient of like another number, then I'd have to divide by that number. And it could be getting messy from there. So solve for your variable that has a coefficient of 1. Then you're going to take that value and plug it in for the value of that variable into the other equation. So where did my pink go? There's my pink. So therefore, then what it'll look like is when you rewrite the second equation, instead of saying 6 times n, I now know what n represents. n represents 2m plus 6. Equals 1. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I can apply distribute. So do you guys see how what I did? I'll stop right there. Yes. You're going to have to do it both. So I'm sorry. What are you saying? The, the second question in red, yeah, why did you do that? Because they're already in the word. Yeah, but I had to solve for n, though. n was not by itself. <coughs> See, in this equation, n is not by itself. So to get n by itself, I had to add a 2m to both sides. You mean it's why I multiply it by 2? Right. Stop, Jordan. So what we're doing again? You could, you could do this. Sub, you could do this using elimination. That's not what we're doing in this problem. This is a different way to do it. Okay. Okay. So now, once I have substituted this in. Um, Sheldon, or Sheldon, let's put that away, please. Now I'll apply distributive property. And by applying distributive property, I have negative 7m plus 12m plus 36 equals 1. All right? And yes, guys, ladies and gentlemen, this is a different process than what we did last class period. Now, I, or two class periods ago, I combine these terms to give me 5m plus 36 equals 1. Now we can solve for our variable. So I subtract 36, and I have 5m equals negative 35. Divide by 5, divide by 5, m equals negative 7. Now I know what the value of m is. So to find the value of n, I've already solved for n. That's what's nice about this process. So when you have a variable coefficient of 1, 
you solve for it. Now you already have one solved. So now to find the value of m, I just take n equals 2 times negative 7 plus 6. n equals negative 8. So now I know what the value is of negative 8 as well as negative 7.